it's not for everybody. It's an invite-only event. And once you do get in, they divide you by class. You get a white badge with a blue line if you're rich enough. You just get a white badge if you're married to someone important. Or if you're just a part of someone's entourage, you get an ugly green badge. You're not good enough. They keep the elites together, and they have their own little police state to make sure these people are focused on ruling the world. If you're not from CNN or the New York Times and you show up uninvited, they'll probably arrest you. And it's all headed up by a guy named Klaus Schwab, who's pretty much running a one-world government here. He kicked off the week by saying the future is theirs, not yours. The future is not just happening. The future is built by us, by a powerful community as you here in this room. We have the means to improve the state of the world. And the way they start is by tracking you. If you go deep in the weeds and what these people are saying at this place, they're openly scheming up some of the craziest plans you'll ever hear of, like tracking your carbon footprint. We're developing, through technology, an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's, where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So, individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. You heard it. The One World Government wants to keep tabs on what you eat and where you go. All because John Kerry's a little mad that your cheeseburger is wiping out part of the population. People forget greenhouse gases are pollution. And 15 million people a year die because of the quality of the air around the world. We're, 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 we're dealing with a crisis here, folks. That's a crisis made by human beings. Maybe they should take their own advice before jetting off across the world on those private jets, emitting all that carbon. But to them, they have more important things to focus on, like preventing the next pandemic, since it worked out so well last time. If it comes 10 years from now, we should have far, far better diagnostic technology. That is, be able to scale up every country within a month uh, to diagnose their entire population. We're a little distracted right now, so getting the debate going uh, is happening slowly. Yeah, a lot of people are distracted by inflation, food shortages, you know, real problems. But the ruling class at Davos says, don't worry, it's all part of the plan. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will, uh, will open up for missteps. Uh, it will open up for uh, shortages of energy. It will create inflationary pressures, and maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. If you have all the money in the world, the last thing you have to worry about is inflation. It's our problem, not theirs. They're busy ruling the world. And shady George Soros says if we don't make their ideas a reality, civilization is done for. Fighting pandemics and climate change, avoiding nuclear wars, maintaining global institutions, have had to take as a backseat to their struggles. That's why I say our civilization may not survive. Believe it when I tell you, these people don't care about any of us. They're just a bunch of globalists hanging out and coming up with too many bad ideas. Rand Paul, Kentucky senator, and he joins me now. Should the American people be scared when the richest people in the entire world get together at a swanky conference and hatch these crazy ideas about how to make our lives better? You know, if they really cared, they could have ridden with me. I was on a plane this morning. I was A category on Southwest Airlines, and, you know, hey, that's something. Wasn't a private jet, but they could have saved. When you're on a private jet, they're spending five times as much of a carbon footprint. So if they really cared about that, they could ride on commercial airlines, but they aren't. They're elitist. But the other real danger here that's even more danger than all their phony caring about carbon footprint, the real danger is this. Look how bad your government is in a country where you get to vote for these people. This would be a government, a world government, where you don't get to vote on anybody. This is everybody's worst nightmare. 
the bureaucracy that we have trouble in our United States because we don't get to vote on them, we vote indirectly. Can you imagine the one world bureaucracy of all these elitists and their private jets that would rule our, our country and we wouldn't get to vote? So I'm dead set against this. And they used to call people and talk about one world government. They used to say, oh, it's a conspiracy. We would always say, no, it's in their mission statement. They say it in every meeting. That's what they're for. But uh, lack, lack of sovereignty means lack of freedom. That means lack of responsiveness. And it's completely antithetical to everything our country stands for. Yeah, and I don't want to put down Bill Gates and these guys. You know, they do a lot for charity. That, but when you hear them kind of just dismiss inflation or, you know, yeah, you're going to have to go through some pain in order to kind of go with my idea. You know, the American people hear that and they think, come on, man, you're not, you're not serious, are you? But it's not only insensitivity because they've never been to a grocery store and have no idea what things cost, but it's also that we now have a whole set of our political spectrum that's out there saying it's caused by greed. If you were in a third grade, third grade class, I would give you a failing grade if you told me inflation was caused by greed. That is the dumbest explanation, the most implausible, and that lacking all facts that someone would try to put forward. Inflation cause, is caused by an increase in the money supply that increases the demand. It's done because we spend too much money. The Federal Reserve prints it up to borrow it. It floods the economy and drives prices up. If you don't understand that, they'll never get it any better. And my prediction is it's gonna get a lot worse before November. What do you think about this tr tracking technology they're cooking up? They're gonna track your, your carbon footprint. I mean, I think that these liberals are already stressed out enough, Senator. Imagine when they find out like everything they do is, is killing the, the ozone. I mean, they're gonna go crazy. They're gonna start yelling at us. Yeah, privacy is not much of a concern for these kind of people. So not only do they wanna track you for your carbon footprint, the WHO has announced you know, they're forming a treaty, and it's going to be a treaty for the next pandemic. But in the next pandemic, it's not going to be a, a, a Washington-based mandate on vaccines or a Washington-based social distancing or mask. It's going to be an international one, and they actually want to track everybody with a QRS code. I think that goes beneath the surface right back <laughs> here, but I'm not sure how they get it in yet. But uh, no, I mean, it's no laughing matter. It is very worrisome. But whenever they talk about it, they have absolutely no concern for privacy, and you're exactly right. They don't care about the individual. They don't know people like us. They've never been on a bus. They've never been on Southwest Airlines. They've never driven a car. Most of them have never even driven their own car. So these are not the kind of people who want telling the rest of us what to do. All right, Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky. Flies commercial.